It's Valentine's Day and we're walking along the river. It's quiet and beautiful. Everything's kind of this brown tone. Make a nice watercolor or oil painting or even a painting in acrylics or a drawing. So we had a nice time out in the river and I like to use the river as subject matter for a lot of my work because I love being out there. I love the way the light is there and the water and the beautiful driftwood and the shoreline and we always have a lot of fun so I have a good feeling about it. And so I think I'm going to do this, um, the shoreline one and then I have to decide what I'm going to work with. I'm a little eclectic as you know and so then that uh, the decision for me is what what do I do it in um, oil pastel watercolor do I do a colored pencil drawing do I do a multimedia piece where I'm bringing all of these things in and I'm looking at the color and I'm thinking this might be a good multimedia piece because it's simple and uh, and so I could work with a lot of materials and they should carry this image pretty well. And before I start working, um, many times I talk to my students about finding subject matter. They ask me, what do, what do I do? Well, what, what, do you, what, what do I use? Do I do a landscape, still life? Uh, do I just draw? I think that liking your subject matter is really important. Loving it is even better. Um, sometimes a student will say, well, I think I should do a still life, although I'm not really too interested in it. Well, if it's not an interesting subject to deal with, why do it? I think you have to have some sort of almost visual, visceral connection with, uh, with what you're working with, because the passion and interest that you have is going to come out in your work. If you're bored with the subject you're working with, don't do it because it will. Shoot. The other thing I advise students on is keep it simple. Um, you may be really interested in a very intricate subject of uh, bridges, um, a lot of architecture, um, water, the things, images can be quite complicated. Um, and that might be okay. And if you have an interest in that, then do it. Keep it simple though because the natural impulse is to love the complexity and get into one part of it and then the rest kind of fades away and then you find out that you haven't really addressed the whole composition. It's best to put the whole thing down first in a simple fashion and then step by step deal with it, increase the complexity as you go. Um, and sometimes we have to fight that impulse because we want to get into that little reflection on an apple right away or, or the hair, you know, the hairs on, on, on a head, you know, right away and, and you know, get into that, that marvelous, lustrous detail. And, and that's good, you know, that, that's, that's a wonderful thing to do. But the, the overall feeling, the overall subject matter and the composition has to be considered. The other thing is um, when you start working, really consider for a moment or two your perspective on the subject. Now, with the understanding that that's going to change because as you work, your creative side will be responding to what you're putting down on the paper so that it's going to change and expect that it's going to change that dialogue will set up a kind of surprise situation where many times when you're doing a drawing, all of a sudden it starts looking different. It tells you that it wants to be different and go with that because that's your creative side and that's the way we develop our work. So there have been instances where a student will be working and then they will say, this is not coming out the way I want it to come out. Well, the battle between what you want and what the work wants is a tension that is set up in the creative process, and that's great. 
don't put that down. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing. I always say like, great, go with it. You know, see what the change is and watch it. Watch as you're working, watch it change. Listen very carefully to what your eyes are telling you. Yeah, I do say that, listen to your eyes. <laughs> and, and oftentimes what happens is in the creative process, a person will go into a, a rather uncomfortable zone. It's sort of like jumping off a cliff. It's like, wait a minute, uh, this, is, this is different. I know the skill, I know how to work it, and I, this is what I had in mind with the subject, but it's changing on me. Let it change, because that's the creative process. In the creative process, there's really no good and no bad. It's really all about what you like. And many times your creative brain, the part, the part that is very creative is saying to you, this is, this is what I want to do. And your logical left side of your brain is saying, you don't know how to do it. You don't know how to, how to address it. Just stay with what you know. So this tension is often set up in the creative process. So just take a deep breath and listen to your eyes and keep working and see how it develops. So well, once the subject matter is chosen and the decision has been made how you're going to work, whether it's going to be oil pastel or watercolor, whatever, that's the jumping off point for the creative process to begin. And that's very exciting. Um, the last thing that I say to a student when we're talking about subject matter is as, as you launch into your, your creative process, Keep, in, keep open to it and, and don't go into a dialogue of restricting yourself or criticizing yourself. And that's such a natural impulse for all of us, including me, as I'm working, I'm saying, oh, what, what the heck is going on here? This isn't right. This, oh, why am I doing this kind of thing? And it's an intrusion from another part of the brain that wants to control everything. And you just have to kind of push that away and keep working again. Listen to your eyes. Uh, if you can imagine, I often say this, um, it's kind of an odd image, but if you can imagine yourself as just a, a pair of eyeballs attached to a hand, that's a really good, that's a really good animal <laughs> to be uh, in the creative. So um, I have um, gathered some materials together of my huge box of oil pastels and um, in a, a variety of pencils. I have regular drawing pencils, charcoal pencils, a Sharpie, a, a regular ballpoint pen, and then an eraser. And then here I have my colored pencils. And I think that should be sufficient for this, here is the picture, which I think I'm gonna draw out first, just map it. And then um, I have masked this area in my sketchbook um, just so I get a nice clean edge. The first thing that I'm going to be doing now is I've, I've ruled out this uh, square and then I've put blue tape around it because I like that nice um, finished edge. Before I even start with drawing this, um, I'm going to put, I'm going to shade this whole area, make a kind of a nice maybe smoky colored ground. So I'm just taking a little piece of the vine charcoal sometimes this is a good thing to do the white paper can be kind of intimidating and this kind of starts getting your imagination going a little bit as far as what kind of colors I think I might come up with. So here's a little bit of um, Conti crayon. And I'm going to blend that in too. And then I, I may take just another color. Maybe some dark brown Conti crayon. This just gives me a nice uh, background color to work on. Charcoal pencil here, and I'm just
putting in the horizon line. And then I'm just going to do the curve of the shoreline here. Now where the light is here, I'm going to take an eraser and remove some of the ground to indicate where the light is. That comes up really easily. And then I'm going to take a, a blue colored pencil and just lightly shade in that blue area there. And then also here on the water. I'm going to add a little purple to this blue. Now I added some green here, just very delicate shading for now. And then I also put some shading in here with the charcoal just to outline the shoreline. Putting in some of the ripples here with um, just using the eraser. Now I'm going to go over this area here with uh, oil pastels. Don't really know what this is going to look like, but I'll find out. Pastel here. And maybe I'll add some into the brown. And I think I'll layer this with the uh, blue. Kind of a pale yellow. I'm going to take a paper towel and rub this. See what effect I can come up with. Now I'm just going to redraw some of the landscape again here, taking a blue colored pencil. Now I'm just going to go into it again with the colored pencil. Some greens and some blacks here to bring the that in and then also this part right here. Okay, here's the photo. And this is my mixed media drawing. I had a lot of fun doing this. I brought in some subtle colors using the oil pastel and the um, colored pencil. And now I've taken the tape off and I have an, a nice drawing here. This is a lot of fun to do, just blending the colored pencil and the oil pastel together. Give it a try.